Hey, so I want to talk to you about your business. And I offer tutorials on my YouTube channel with just tech stuff, how to edit, how to set up different things and whatnot. But today I just want to talk about the mindset stuff and the spiritual stuff because to me that's the entire core of everything. So why are dreams important? What is it? Why does that even have to be a thing? What is a dream? Why is the whole thing? Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. Life is a mother mystery. It's a mystery. Why are we here? Where'd we come from and where do we go? Um, this is some serious stuff. And a lot of us, I mean, you know, they always talk about the collective amnesia. We have just bought it. We've just been like, we're in life, duh. You go to grade school and then high school and then college and then you get a job and then you die, duh. Like, duh, dot com. And it's like, hmm, I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's what we set up and that's right now. That's not even what we set up in all time. That's just what we have right now. Other times they did other things. They farmed, they hunted, they gathered. They did all those things. Okay, so where are you at right now? with your life? Are you happy with what you've created? Do you have a feeling inside of you that's like gnawing away at you of something else you've always wanted to try or do or travel to? Do you have that in you? For me, it was weird because I feel like when I met my first real boyfriend, um, we were so spiritually connected that it was sort of activated my soul or something because I always had different feelings and different things, but nothing was enough to make me really like radically change my life. And I, even when I met him, I moved to San Francisco. Um, I had visited there and I was really depressed and my mom brought me with her on one of her trips and we took a train and I was like, what is this place? It was the first time I'd ever been there. I was like, this is the most amazing city. Side note, I don't know what's going on there right now. It's very sad because it's a beautiful city. Um, anyways, and I met him within the first week of moving there. And um, we were like instantly connected. We were like, it was just crazy. So anyways, that's for another day. But from there, we we got a house. We started, we rented a house in San Francisco. And we were living together. And I started having these nightmares about a tree being struck by lightning and um, the trunk. And it was just like over and over again, I couldn't get these images out of my mind. So I started writing a bunch of stuff about it. Just what is it? Like I would talk from the trunk's point of view, like what's happening, what's happening. And that sort of led me on this whole journey of following my intuition. Because it started when I moved to San Francisco because I followed my intuition. I had never left where I grew up. I was, you know, born in Geneva, Switzerland, but I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I grew up in the desert, went to the same grade school, same high school, same college there, you know, the, you know, college, not the, not ASU, but just the college. And then I moved to San Francisco. So I had never done that before. I knew one person sort of that I had visited once. Um, but anyways, so it was, it was, it was interesting. So then I had these images of, I mean, we had only been dating for about a year. I mean, we were really connected. It was great. I love my life there. Although it is very expensive, obviously, and that was starting to freak me out. But um, I started having this image, these images of this green, like lush looking, not forest, but just, you know, just wild, open, free greenery, thick greenery and a white screen door. And I could hear it the way it would hit when it would close. And um, I knew I was supposed to go to the Midwest. I could, I, my, my grandparents um, were in Winneka, Illinois, which is a suburb north of Chicago. So I spent a lot of my summers out there. So I knew that feeling of being in that humidity and the, the way the soil smelled, because you don't get that in the desert. That's not the same thing. It's totally different. So when I would go there in the summer, I remember that. It burned into me. That and the mosquitoes that we would have welts on our arms and legs. But anyways, um, so I told him and I said, listen, this is kind of crazy, but I'm having these, this like feeling, and I don't know anyone that does this. It's not like my mom is also like this. Not at all. Dad, not at all. Sister, kind of. Definitely kind of, my sister is kind of like this, but brother, not at all. 
And like, it just was something that was my own unique thing that I just, I would feel something and I wouldn't really know what it was. And I would just go, I need to kind of explore this because it was the strongest thing on the horizon. You know, I was like, that's the strongest thing. So I told him and I was like, listen, I know we just started dating, but I need to go to the Midwest. I have no idea where, actually, you know what? I just remembered, I thought it was Pennsylvania. I've never been to, up to that point, I had never been to Pennsylvania. I was like, I need to go to Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I was like, so convinced of it. I was like, I have to go to Pennsylvania. You just don't understand me, okay? And he's like, well, I have relatives in Pennsylvania. And I go, you do? And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well then let's go there. And we're gonna find a house with the white screen door that makes a certain sound. And he's like, okay which is weird. And that's how I know that we are like from the same soul family. Cause he was so okay with it. He was like, okay, yeah, let's do that. And I'm like, what? So we, he goes, Oh, my mom just got a new house. I haven't seen it yet in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Let's go out there and let's just look at her house and sort of stop there. Let that be like our place where we regroup and figure out where in Pennsylvania we're going to go. You know? So I'm like, okay. So we go to his mom's place First of all, it's the behind behind her house. You can't see the neighbors. And behind her house is a forest preserve. So it's all just greenery and trees and everything. So I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, we're there and stuff. And they always sat out in the patio in the back. So I'm sitting in the patio in the back. And um, when the screen door shut, it made the sound that I remember. And I looked over and I thought, that's the screen that was in my image. Like this thing I had, this whatever vision, I guess. And so I told him, I said, I think this is where we're supposed to be. And he's like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But then my grandmother was being brought home from the hospital. She had broken her hip and she was having health problems and whatnot. And so I was like, let me go out there. You stay here. Cause it was like a train ride away or like, you know, a couple hour drive. I can't remember if it was one or three hours. It was really close from Ann Arbor, Michigan, Michigan to Winneka, Illinois. So I went out there and, um, I ended up staying there three years and um, my grandmother had 24 hour nurses. I thought she was gonna pass away as soon as she got home because I thought she was gonna kind of like relax and be like, okay, I'm home and sort of just, you know, transcend. And it ended up, she lived for three years, which thank God was wonderful, but she didn't talk anymore because she was traumatized by the hospital. And some of the nurses were horrible, but some of them were wonderful. So thank God I was there because I was sort of monitoring these nurses. My uncle lived there as well. Um, but anyway, so I was there while I was there, I knew I was supposed to be there. And I, I was with her when she passed away. I, um, I just had a feeling about it. She had strokes and the nurses told me this is, you know, maybe towards the end. So I called my family. I said, if you want to come see her, this is the time. Cause she's having, you know, I feel like she's at the end. So I thought she would pass even when I, at this point also, the person I was dating had moved to Chicago and got an apartment in the city and was working at House of Blues. So I went to his apartment that weekend so my family could be alone with her. And when I came back on Sunday night, she um, was breathing differently. So I was holding her hand and I was reading a rosary book. She was a very uh, hardcore Catholic. So I was reading um, a rosary book with her and I felt like there was bubbles in the air. Like uh, I just felt like I was fl floating and I looked at her and realized she wasn't breathing. And I went, ah! and then I felt her, her like go through my chest, squeeze my heart and shoot up through the ceiling. And I was just like, oh my God. And I was just like crying, like the most beautiful, it was like beautiful. It was like, I felt so, it was a sacred moment. And I felt so honored to be there with her when she passed and when she left her body. And I felt like she thanked me and hugged me and left a little key in my heart. So that's a whole nother thing. But death and my experience with death is why I started my podcast, Death Talk Podcast. And the link is, well, on my websites or below, or I don't know where I'm posting this. Anyways, so during that time when I was living in Winneka at her house, I had reoccurring dreams about Jim Carrey and that we were friends. And I had never even thought about him before that. So I had all these dreams about him. And then I felt like I was supposed to move back to, or move to LA. So I moved to LA. I started my journey there. I started working at a record label instead of a film studio originally. And that's when I met Dapo. And that's when I, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And I ended up meeting Jim Carrey through the record label, a whole nother story. But anyways, I just thought I'd tell you that. So follow your intuition. Okay. I'm running out of time. Bye.